Welcome to Cat and Jess Talk the Best, where we're going to be talking about IMDb's top 250 movies from April 12th, 2018. My name is Kat. And I'm Jess. And today we are talking about number 178, Andre Rublev, which is a biography drama history film from 1966. This has an 8.2 on 41,287 votes. So we are revealing the mystery line from Blade Runner 2049. The line was, I love the smell of napalm in the morning. And we did not have any guesses at all on this one <laughs> because I was struggling with figuring out what the password to Twitter and Instagram were. So sorry about that. <laughs> um, but that is from Apocalypse Now. So, our mystery line that will be revealed in How to Train Your Dragon is, The Dingo Took My Baby. <laughs> so make sure you take your guesses on that. It's like, I know most of these lines. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> so the spoiler-free synopsis for Andre Rublev, an expansive Russian drama this film focuses on the life of revered religious icon painter Andre Rublev, drifting from place to place in a tumultuous era. The peace-seeking monk eventually gains a reputation for his art, but after Rublev witnesses a brutal battle and unintentionally becomes involved, he takes a vow of silence and spends time away from his work. As he begins to ease his troubled soul, he takes steps towards becoming a painter once again. I mean, that's pretty much the movie. <laughs> sure. Condensed down into a few sentences. I got that's... more from that than the movie. <laughs> well, yeah. All right, so we've had this director before. Um, we had him with uh, Stalker, which is number 193. This is directed by Andre Tarkovsky. He also directed Solaris and The First Day. And this stars, I apologize with these names. These are Russian names, so I tried practicing. I did. Um, Anatoly Solonitsyn, Ivan Lapikov, and Nikolay Grinko. Yep. I tried. Yay. <laughs> so, and we actually have had... Um, Anatoly before. We also had him in Stalker. Yes. So the ratings for this. On IMDb 31.5% of users rated this at a 10. It does not have any rev enough reviews on Metacritic. And then Rotten Tomatoes it has a 95% on 40 critical reviews. So two of the fresh. Anthony Lane you may dread being ground down by this extraordinary film, but fear not. It will bear you aloft. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and then Bilge Ibiri. Tarkovsky's version of an indifferent world is inflected with the spirituality that is ever present in his work. A scene that while we may be on our own, we are never quite alone. Or a sense that while we may be on our own, we are never quite alone. Oops. Dropped my phone. <laughs> Alright. Well, it works for them. And then, so two rotten. Jesus Fernandez Santos. The biography itself is awkwardly narrated and does not move us. Yeah. <laughs> I can agree with that. Yeah. And then Vincent Canby. Since there always seems to be more going on in the head of the film's director than the head of the man playing Andre, the system does not work for me. <laughs> yeah, I will say, he does look kind of lost throughout most of the movie. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> so the consensus, 
Andre Rublev is a cerebral epic that filters challenging ideas through a grand scope, forming a moving thesis of art, faith, and, a su- and the sweep of history. Yeah, I don't know. Don't know about that. <laughs> so the money, the budget for this was 1 million Russian rupees. And then I'm just going to guess that the rest of the the money is in Russian rupees. Um, so opening weekend, it made 11,537 rupees. Domestically, it made 124,189 Internationally, it made 21,302. And worldwide, it made 145,491. So that's either in dollars or rupees, but it doesn't seem like that's it made its money back. But I don't know. It could have. Because that could be in dollars, and the exchange rate could be quite a bit. So I don't know. But that is the money for that one. The awards, this did win three awards for the Cannes Film Festival, the the Preshi Prize went to the director, Andre Tarkovsky, the French Syndicate of Cinema Critics, Best Foreign Films, or Best Foreign Film, to Andre Tarkovsky for this, and then the Hoosy Awards, or the Juicy, I don't know which way you're supposed to say that, Ugh. but that is also, it won Best Foreign Film there as well. And this does have, let's see how many versions, one, two, three, four, this has five versions that has the 205 minute version, which oh, is the God, original no. length. The 165 minute version, which is a re edit. There's a 186 minute version, which is a re edit. The 183 minute version, which is the 2004 re release slash the Blu ray release. And then the 145 minute UK release. So it could have been any one of those <laughs> for these awards. <laughs> I have no idea which one. It's like, I know we watched the three hours, like, three minutes. We watched the Blu-ray version, the 183 yeah. minutes, which is the 2004 release. Yeah. I was like, I had to make sure I was watching the right version <laughs> that you were, or else we would have been really messed up. Yeah. So, initial thoughts. Okay, so... I went in, I'm like, alright, we. this is our second Russian film. Um, same director. I didn't like the first film we watched that was in Russian by the same director, so I was very hesitant. And then I saw this over three hours long, and I'm like, Ugh, why so long? <laughs> and then I even said that while I was watching this, why so long? Yeah. I was literally talking to Kat the entire time I was watching this movie, and that was the only way I could stay focused. I was texting her the entire time. Yeah, I, when she was watching it, I was watching the Golden Globes. She was she was sending me Golden Globe, like, who won. And that was helping me stay focused on the film. It was weird. And yeah, this movie just drags. It just drags. And you're like, I was wondering. I'm like, okay. It says, like, in the synopsis and all, like, that it's he's a saint. I'm like... Okay, so me being Catholic here, I was like, okay, what Satan-like stuff am I going to see? I didn't see, a, like, a single thing. So I was irritated by that. <laughs> it was just like, and it's supposed to be about him, and I felt like he wasn't really in it, like, at all. He was like a background character to his own movie. Yeah. So that irritated me, and I kept checking the clock. I'm like, this could have been way shorter. Yeah. Like, this could have been cut down at least an hour, hour and a half at least. Um, it was confusing to follow. It was. Uh, I I looked up the synopsis, too, on IMDb. And I'm like, okay, am I not, am I going crazy? Is this what I'm really supposed to be watching and following? And I was right, but it was just. Utterly confusing and all over the place, and I'm like, 
oh lord, this is not good. But I will say I liked it better than Stalker, not by much. Then, yeah. I mean, there's some good quotes in there, but that's about it, so. Yeah. <laughs> so, I really didn't know at all what this movie was about until you started texting me, and then you were texting me things that were happening, and I'm like, I haven't even seen the movie, so why are you telling me this? <laughs> like, I don't know I what you're talking you about. <laughs> you were telling me some details, and you're like, now this is happening, and I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about, so, I don't know. <laughs> Because you told me something about a prince, and I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, yeah, that was the confusing part. <laughs> but, like, that was pretty much all I had to go on, was there's an artist and a prince, and I was like, I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. And so I watched it, and I watched, like, the first 30 minutes, and I was like, okay, I'm bored. I'm done. I'm ready for this to be over. So the next two and a half hours were hard like really hard i did start falling asleep at one point but <laughs> i managed to wake myself up and then i was playing on my phone but then i got done playing on my phone i figured out what i was trying to do so yeah i was i was pretty distracted and that really didn't help me figure out at all what was happening <laughs> <laughs> like, I was already lost 30 minutes into the movie, so I just kind of gave up the rest of the way. You're like, I'm done. Yeah. I'm just done. <laughs> I did not like this movie at all. Stalker was more entertaining because I got to think about the aliens. Yeah. I Even remember. though <laughs> they did mention aliens two times in this movie that I saw in my translations. But yeah. then, of course... There was, like, some translations they just, just didn't even do. They're like, we're just not going to put subtitles for this part. So. Yeah, it was, like, the different language, because it wasn't Russian. It was, yeah, like, I, Italian or something. I don't know what it was, but... I loved your text from it, too, because you were watching this, and you said, this is almost as bad as eight and a half. And I was in the middle of teaching, and I bust out laughing. <laughs> and my students were like, why are you laughing? And I'm like, oh, my friend's just hating a movie. <laughs> yeah my dad texted me there was about 15 minutes left in the movie he's like that's a really long movie because i watch it on his server so he can tell what i'm watching he's like why are you still watching it i was like i really don't know I have no <laughs> idea. just still watching it but yeah i did not like it the only reason it's better than eight and a half is the music because <laughs> the music at eight and a half is just like what <laughs> Yeah. All right, that was your warning. If you haven't watched the film yet, then stop listening and come back after you've watched it. So we're going to go based on the IMDb detailed ish synopsis to know what exactly is happening because I was lost the entire time so chapter one is called hot air balloon and this is there's two parts to the movies or to the movie and then there's chapters within the parts yeah. there's six chapters in part one and three chapters in part two so chapter one of part one is called hot air balloon and this made no sense. Yeah, I was like, I don't understand what any of this has to do with anything going on. Because I was like, you had told me something about an artist. I was like, okay, I thought we were just going to be watching him paint the whole time. Like, I just, that's literally what I thought we were going to be doing. Just watching him paint. That's what, that's what he's known for. But that didn't start out that way. Yeah, so we see this, like, big, huge contraption thing. And this man is, like, climbing up this tower to get on top of this, I guess, hot air balloon. That's not what I thought it was, but then it yeah. started flying, and then I guess it was a hot air balloon, and these people were all trying to stop him and chase him and stuff, and that's how the movie opens. And I think it's about 10, maybe 15 minutes of this, and I'm just like, what is happening? But I did think it was kind of funny, he kept saying, I'm flying, and I'm just like, okay. Then the other thing I did notice, especially 
later on, but I noticed it right immediately here in this first part, is the voices were so off. They were. And the sounds. The sound was off. pretty bad, too, because, like, something would be happening super further away than, like, right in front of the screen, but it sounded like it was happening right in front of you. Yeah, the sound wasn't very good. Yeah. But so that's chapter one. <laughs> yeah, like, it's like, did you say how the dude fell to the ground? Oh, yeah, and then, like, crash landed. He fell to the ground, and then there's a horse rolling around on the ground. Yeah. And I'm like, why is there a horse rolling around on the ground? The horse had nothing to do with the balloon. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think this director likes horses, because there was a lot of shots that just focused on horses. There's a reason why, according to him, but we'll get to that when we get to trivia. I mean, I like horses, but I don't see what they have to do with an artist unless this artist is painting said horses. So. It's a director's choice. Let's just say that. It's a dumb choice. Because I think he <laughs> spent a total of five minutes focusing on just horses. You could have cut an entire five minutes out of this movie. Made it less than three hours. <laughs> It would have been two hours and 58 minutes if you had cut the five minutes of horses out. (laughs) (laughs) So chapter two is called The Buffoon. 1400. Yep. And so we see these three guys walking around in a field. And it's like a a field that's been harvested, I guess. Because there's little hay bales laying everywhere. Yeah. And this is where we kind of get introduced to Andre. He's one of the guys walking around. And it starts raining as they're walking. And so they find this, like, barn place. And they go inside and take shelter in there. But there is a guy in there singing and dancing and being a fool. Entertaining the other people that are in the barn thing. (laughs) And it's just, like, this random-ass song. I'm like, it's kind of funny. Yeah, he's like... But how does this pertain to the movie? Yeah, he's like making fun of all kinds of things. And at one point he's like making fun of the travelers. And I'm just like, I don't understand any of this. (sighs) And then... The soldiers come. And they take the singing guy away. Yeah. And then we don't see him again until two hours and 45 minutes later. (laughs) Yeah, near the end of the movie. You're like, okay. And that's pretty much that part. I'm like, yeah. What, the, like, other than at the beginning when we, when they're walking in the field, what does that have to do with anything to do with our character? Nothing. <laughs> I mean, I will admit, the little dancing guy is probably the best part of the movie. <laughs> he was I, pretty funny. The song funny. made me laugh, I'll say he that. Was, yeah, he was funny, and that's about it. But he's pretty funny, because anytime you see him on the screen, his pants keep falling down. I thought that was funny because he couldn't keep his pants up. <laughs> um, so chapter three. Uh, this is Theo. Yep, Theo. That's what I called him. Theophanes, the Greek. This is 1405. Yes. And this is the part I was falling asleep. This entire chapter here. (laughs) So I was like, I got some of it, and then other parts I didn't get. So I was like, okay, they're dragging a crucifix, and they're going to crucify this dude. That's about all I got. Yeah, and then, I don't know, his dead body around and everything. And there's um, Theo... What? Theo Fanis? I just call him Theo. It's easier that way for me. He's talking with one of the monks that have been walking with Andre's name is, what, Cyril or something? Yeah. And uh, Theo asks him to be his assistant because, you know, Theo's a great artist himself and all that. And he's like, the other guy's like, yeah, but you have to come to the monastery and ask me, your, like, ask me yourself in front of everybody. I'm like, why? <laughs> Why? Do you just need to be, like, show off or something? Yeah. And, but he doesn't go. He said he sends somebody else to the monastery, and he asks for Andre instead. And Andre's like, yeah, I'll go. And then this other guy's like, what is it, Danila or something? 
I got these guys like confused. I did. Because they all look the same. And he's like, oh, he ref- he's like, no, you go and everything. And Andre's sad. He's like, he's like, I can't paint without you. Yeah. I'm like, ugh, gross. Yep. I did remember <laughs> that. He's like, didn't want to go without his mentor person, but his mentor person's like, just go away. <laughs> yeah. And so Andre leaves and everything, and Cyril leaves the monastery, yelling at people, calling it, he he quoted the Bible at this point, saying, it's um, the part where Jesus is sending the thieves and all these people from the temple. Yeah. Pretty much when JC got pissed off and just, like, threw everybody out. That's one of my favorite stories, I'm not gonna lie. Because you see Jesus as, like, a human, (laughs) getting angry. Which is nice. <laughs> okay. I have no idea what you're talking about. Bible stuff. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, I never read it. <laughs> That's a lie. I got through about two pages of this guy is the son of this guy is the son of this oh, guy. Oh, you is started the son at the worst guy. part. <laughs> That's why I've never actually read it. <laughs> well, um, no, you won't watch that musical. Yeah, but I won't watch JC any Superstar musical. shows it pretty well, I'll say that. Won't watch musicals, probably won't ever, unless it's on this list, watch anything about Jesus, and I definitely won't read the Bible, so <laughs> there's no oh, point know, in that's trying. Why, that's why you got me. That's why you got me around <laughs> to help. <laughs> that's pretty much chapter three. Yeah. I did think it was funny at one point, um, the dad guy, I don't remember which guy it is, but he's like the dad and his son is in the house questioning him about things. And he, uh, asks him if he fed the dog. <laughs> He's like, yeah. well, did you ask me to feed the dog? No. And I'm like, what a smart ass. <laughs> That's what I literally thought. I'm like, what a smart ass. That was, like, the only part that I found somewhat entertaining in that whole entire situation there. But I was falling asleep through most of that part. I was good. Again, it helped you were texting me. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so chapter four is called The Passion according to Andre. And it was 1406. Yes. So, this is, um, they're, they're kind of like walking along through the forest and stuff, and Andre's got his little apprentices with him and some other people with him and stuff. And, um, they have to wash brushes. He's, like, telling his little dude, his apprentice guy, that he needs to wash the brushes. And the apprentice dude isn't really wanting to wash the brushes, but Andre's like, well, I had to wash the brushes for three years. And I'm like, okay. That's unimportant, but okay. It's like, alright. You have to pay your dues, I guess. Yeah. It's pretty much what he's saying. Basically, but I was just like, uh, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and then um they meet up with Theo. Yeah. Who I was like, why does he have ants on his feet? Yeah, I didn't understand the ants on his feet either, but I also didn't recognize him. I just called him old guy because I was asleep through most of chapter 3. Okay, so that's why I was just like, meh. <laughs> yeah. So, chapter four didn't make a lot of sense with Theo, because we got introduced to Theo in chapter three. But, yeah, I was confused as to why he had the ants on his feet. And he was just like, he was letting them crawl on his feet, but he wouldn't let them crawl up his ankles. He would shoo them back down. I'm like, okay. And then... The kid's still cleaning brushes, and... Theo's, like, talking about the vows and stuff like that. Like, the vows that he took and vows that Andre took and all this. And Andre is, like, goes on about Russian people suffering. The people in Russia suffering. And... I think that's, and then I, isn't that we don't we see like a crucifixion here too? 
Yeah, they're pretty much reenacting the, in the sense, the Passion, which is like the Stations of the Cross. And so it shows like how Jesus carries the cross and everything. Like they drag in the movie, they drag it up the hill, and then they have someone nailed to the cross. So yeah. that's where they're just reenacting it. But that's pretty much all of chapter four. Yeah, yeah. And then, so chapter five is called The Pagan Feast, and this is 1408. Um, so, Andre and his little dudes, his little follower guys, are going through the forest. He's got quite a few people with him now. And they run across a midsummer festival where they see a bunch of naked people running through the forest. And I was thinking to myself, I'm like, man, Russians get away with a lot of stuff. They do. Because a a lot of the stuff that's in this movie and a lot of stuff that's in Stalker would never have been allowed in any of the movies that came out at the same time. Exactly. (laughs) I'm like thinking, like, okay, this is 1966. You barely get nudity now. And this is 2020. Yeah. But then, of and course, these people are just running around fully naked, and it's like no big deal. And I'm like, God, that's amazing. Oh, I will say then that a lot of our movies are actually seen by most everyone. I feel like a lot of Russian movies really only get seen by people in Russia, and then those people like us that specifically seek them out. Yeah. So. I feel like that might be why they're able to get away with a little bit more than we are. (laughs) (laughs) And yet, this, like, 1966, so... I'm trying to think government-wise. I don't know. It's too much to think about. I know. (laughs) I'll think about it later. But so, Andre decides that he's going to investigate this little uh, festival going on here. And he sees them, like, carrying flaming torches, running around naked, and they capture him at one point and, like, tie him up and tell him that he can't get released until the morning because of something. And then this woman comes in and she's just completely naked and she's talking to him. And then she decides that she's going to kiss him and then she's going to let him go. And I thought she was going to do a little bit more than just kiss him after she let him go, but she just let him go. I was thinking that, too. I was like, what is about to happen right now? (laughs) I'm like, are we going to have, like, a a scene here? (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, how how dirty is this going to (laughs) get? But then they put, like, this boat thing, and it kind of almost looks like a miniature version of a Viking funeral boat. And they kind of set it sail in the water, and they direct it the way it needs to go. And at the end of the, like, people directing it, there was a horse over there stomping his foot in the water. And then it jumps back to Andre, and we see he gets back to his people, and they're like, well, where have you been? He's like, I was with the naked people. And they're, like, questioning him about that, but he gets distracted by the boat floating in the water. Because now all the stuff that's in bed, well, that was inside the boat is burned. And that's that's pretty much chapter five, I think. Um, they're in the boats and everything, and there's, like, people fighting oh, yeah. cops. This is right before, this is, like, right near the end of it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, like, one guy gets caught, and the lady gets away, and she's naked, and she just swims into the river. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of this scene because to me, the with her swimming and then pulling the camera away, it made it look like she was not going anywhere at all. No, it didn't. It made it look like she was in the water, in the same exact spot, just moving her arms, but not going anywhere because they were p- zooming out, but they were like, I guess not really zooming out, but like, I guess, but they were going out, but they didn't do a wide shot they just got behind her so it didn't look like she was going anywhere at all it looked like she was making no progress i was like this shot is giving me a headache (laughs) seriously (laughs) 
Because I feel like if they had done the wider part of the water in front of her, it would have looked like she was maybe going somewhere. Or if it had been more even, where it was not so wide behind her, not so wide in front of her, but more even between the two, then it would have looked like she was going somewhere. But the way they did it, it just did not look like she was going anywhere at all. I remember that shot. I was like, what in the world is happening? But yeah, that's chapter five. So then chapter six, which is the last chapter of part one, is called Last Judgment. And it is 1408. And Andre has been tasked with painting what is called the Last Judgment on the walls of this new church. But he's having some issues with it. He's kind of losing his mind. And he's also losing helpers. That I don't really know what they are doing because they're not painting at all. They're doing something, but they're not painting. So I don't know what they're doing. But he's having issues with it. And... This is where we get introduced to some woman, but I don't ever remember learning her name. Yeah, I didn't remember her name either. I'm just like, okay, whatever, this is woman is here. Yeah, but she, like, comes in carrying straw, comes into the cathedral, and she's got this straw, and she is listening to this boy talk about, like, he's reading some kind of scripture or something about women. And she, like, stops and listens to him, but then the boy notices she's listening, and he stops reading. But then, Silly, or Killy, or whatever his name is. Krilly. I don't remember. The the guy. The dude. Yeah. He tells the boy to keep reading, so he does, and so the woman drops her straw and sees, like, paint or something on the wall. To me, it looked like mud on on the wall of the cathedral, and she's like, crying, scraping at it. And I'm just like, I don't understand. Like, I had no idea what was going on at all. Yeah, this was just weird. But to me, it seemed like maybe he was... I'm sure you know what that church is called, but that one where it's got the big mural on the ceiling. To me, it seemed like he was tasked with painting something like that in this church, but couldn't do it, so he threw the paint on the wall and called it good. It's and like, then quit. It's like, <laughs> it's like, meh. Not Forget one. this. <laughs> uh, Sistine Chapel? Yes. It seems like maybe that's what he, he was, like, tasked to do, but then he just couldn't. So, I don't really know. That, that was just a weird part. I was like, why? Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know. But after that... Andre, like, runs outside because he's super upset. And then the woman kind of, like, follows him over to the door. What do you want? I'm almost done. (laughs) (laughs) Um. But the woman, like, follows him over the door. But she doesn't go outside. She just kind of stands there and stares outside because it's raining. Well, yeah. Okay. That was another thing that I didn't really like in this movie was the rain. It looked... There's a bunch of rain. And half the time it looked decent, and then the other half of the time it looked super bad. So, And I'm like super curious. I'm like, I don't think it rains that much in Russia. I don't know. It depends on the area that they're in. Because some of the climate would be like... It's good. America, I mean, it depends. So. Like, Russia's a freaking huge country. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's got a lot of climate that's like some of the climates here in America, so it just depends on where they're at. It could possibly rain a lot, so I don't really know. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty, that's the end of part one slash chapter six. So chapter yeah. six of part one, that's pretty much it. Uh, then it gets to part two, and this is the part I was telling Kat. I was like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, because you don't see Andre you don't see for, like, Andre. the next hour. And I'm like, 
where's my dude? Isn't this supposed to be about him? Yeah, I, I had and no idea. And it was like, where is he? I yeah. was like, I was like, isn't that supposed to be about this guy? Yeah. And he was like, nowhere to be found. Yeah. So part two starts with, uh, chapter one is called Raid on the City of Vladimir. It's 1408. And we see this encampment and this, the prince is coming and ends up there on opposite sides of the river. And so they have to walk along the river on opposite sides till they find a place that they can cross. And then they are heading towards this city and they break down the door of the cathedral and or wait, no, not yet. They, like, go to the city and they start raiding it and, like, burning all the buildings and they're trying to get into the cathedral and they have this big, huge barge thing, I guess, that's supposed to bust open the door and they're trying to bust that open the door. That was terrible. And I'm like, that is a terrible battering ram. Let's yeah. not lie here. I'm like, you're not even trying. It's not even close enough. Yeah. It's not a big enough ram. Come yeah. on, get your shit together. <laughs> but they eventually do break down the door of the cathedral. And then once they do, we see Andre is inside. And I'm like, oh, there's the dude. Okay. <laughs> but then I'm just like, it kind of only really follows him in this part. Because we see them, they're like killing everything. And then we see him save the girl that he had saved that was concerned about him before when he couldn't paint the walls. Like, this, uh, this soldier or whatever had picked her up and he was taking her up this ladder and Andre goes with an axe and just kills the guy. Yep. And, and like, the way the guy falls down made me laugh. Because <laughs> it was just so bad. It was really bad special effects there. Yeah. I will say a lot of the, um, deaths in this, cause like, a little bit later on, one one of the guys who was Andre's, like, little assistant guy, he had escaped, but as we see him running a little bit later, he gets shot, and then he, like, very slowly walks forward and very slowly falls over. I'm like, oh, I don't think that's how that works, but okay. Oh, sorry. I lost my sticky note. Had to get it. Did you check my on my bookshelf? Logan was looking for headphones. <laughs> ah. That's why I was like, can I talk to him really quick? Okay. <laughs> Sean was looking for attention. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I can't give him attention right now. I was like, I tell Logan, Mike Logan, I'm recording. Well, I told him Don't I was. Don't bug me. And he's still, he's coming up here waiting for me to be done. <laughs> I wanted him to go away. <laughs> You're like, patience. I'm almost done. But, oh. so then, the only people that are left in the cathedral is Andre and that girl. And she's like sitting there braiding a dead girl's hair. And then she falls asleep on the dead girl. And yeah, that's like, what was weird. <laughs> what in the world? And I'm like, why are you braiding a dead person's hair? Just leave him alone. And then... All the while she's doing that, Andre is talking to the ghost of Theo, and it took me forever to actually figure out that it was a, supposed to be a ghost, and I only noticed it because he just would magically appear on the opposite side of him, and I thought maybe it was just inconsistent shots, but then I was like, no way, I think that dude's supposed to be a ghost. Yeah, they didn't show that at all. I yeah. was like, what is this dude doing here? He's, like, old. Yeah. And Andre's getting old. This doesn't make sense. Yeah, it didn't make sense, but then I was like, well, they're, those shots are super inconsistent. He, like, just appears on the opposite side of him somehow. Then I was like, is this guy supposed to be dead? Is he supposed to be a ghost? <laughs> it's not a very good ghost. No, it's not a good ghost at all. He's just, like, there. But the only reason I guessed it is because he kept appearing... Like, he would just automatically be on the other side when there's no way he could have gotten there that fast as a normal, a normal old person. <laughs> but so, um, 
he talks to Theo and he tells him about how he killed this man to save her and it's he's like that's a sin and all this and he's like I've sinned and he commits to his vow, vow of silence and that's that's where that one leaves off and he pretty much doesn't talk almost the rest of the movie. Yeah, until like so, right at the end of the movie. Right at the very end. So the chapter was like the next chapter is the silence. Yeah, chapter two. Fourteen twelve. Yeah. Okay, okay, I guess. Mine has that too. And there's famine all over the country. And it seems like Andre and this woman that he brought from the cathedral that he rescued are just kind of going on about their lives. They found this little town to live in. But then some soldiers show up and kind of start tormenting them and messing with them and stuff. And, uh, the the C, the guy that his name starts with a C, Kirill or whatever. Cyril or something. I yeah, I couldn't. Re I don't remember how they said it, and no matter how I wrote it down, I would have never been able to pronounce it again. But he shows up and he wants to be accepted back into the church, and so they accept them and they tell him something like, "You need to write this down fifteen times or something like that." I'm like, what? <laughs> I was like, that's an interesting way. And then this um, dwarf kind of walks. He's like standing next to Cyril. And he's chasing after the head of this monastery. Like thanking him <laughs> for letting him back in. And I'm like, D what? <laughs> that's what I thought too. I'm like, why is this guy here? <laughs> yeah, I had no idea why he was there. He just like all of a sudden appeared and was so happy. I don't get it. Yeah, I don't either. But then all the while that's happening, Andre's girlfriend or whatever she's supposed to be, the chick that he rescued, is outside talking to these soldiers and not even really talking. Like, they're talking to her and she managed to get some food that the dogs were fighting over and she's eating it and they're like, oh no, you don't eat food, like dirty food. And then... Then they start laughing at her because she's eating the food. And then the head soldier guy is like giving her presents and saying that he's that she's gonna be his eighth wife because he doesn't have a Russian wife. And she just seems to think it's like the best thing in the world. And I was just yeah. like, What? In the world? And Andre's going over there and he's trying to stop her, but she just doesn't want anything to do with him anymore. She's like, No, I'm gonna go be a wife and keeps running away from him. Yeah, she she just goes with the guys. Yep. And that's the end of that one. <laughs> this is the last chapter. Yeah. The Bell. Fourteen Bell. Fourteen twenty three. So it's quite a bit uh, time difference here. Yeah. It's eleven years. And I really didn't understand what this had to do with anything. No, I mean, these people come and they're asking this kid, like, where are these people are at? And the kid's like, they're all taken or dead or whatever. They're all dead. <laughs> but he knows the secret of what they're looking for. Of how to make, like, a bell or something like that. Yeah, something. And so they're like, he's like, take me with you and I'll tell you the secret. So they take him. And so they're like, they got to dig a hole to make like this room for the bell, and the bell tower and all this shit. But they have to have the right clay. This kid keeps saying, this isn't the right clay. This isn't the right clay. And then he's walking around in the, in the rainstorm and he finds the right clay. And Andre happens to be going by with his horse and cart and sees the kid just yelling. And I'm just like. Is it, this is just like a coincidence. Like, what? Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. Dude's yeah. here. Now we connect Andre finally. Yeah. 
you know, just you have to throw your make your character that your movie is titled in there, you know, every once in a while. Yeah. But so the next like forty five minutes they're sitting there working on building the bell and building the bell and Andre's there and he's just kind of watching them build the bell. Or make Pretty the much. bell, I guess. And then they finally get ready to do it. Like, get ready to cast the, the metal into the, the frame, I guess. And then we see Father Cyril like, begging... Andre for forgiveness or something because he was mad about Andre having more talent than him. And I was just like, what? But he's like, keeps trying to get him to forgive him. But Andre won't say anything. <laughs> he just looks at him. And then they've the next part, they like break open the cast of the bell and the bell is there. And I'm like, that's a really pretty bell. How yeah. the hell did you do that? <laughs> well, that's, that's some good talent there. And then they're getting ready to pull it up into, I guess, the bell tower. And they have to have a ton of people to do this. Bell looks heavy. Yeah. And so they get it up there, and then the prince guy comes, and he's like, okay, ring the bell. But they're telling the kid that he needs, like, the kid that directed all of this, that they found that said... Oh, I know the secret of the bell. Which the first time, like, when they went from talking to about the bell to the clay, I was like, did they just, like, interchange those words and this is what they were looking for the whole time? <laughs> was clay? But then they went back to talking about the bell and I was like, okay, no, they really meant the bell. Really? I was, I was confused. I thought they just kept interchanging bell and clay. I was like, okay, what are you really looking for here? <laughs> but so... They want the kid to ring the bell, but he just kind of goes and stands over near it, and somebody else rings it for him, and he just gets super emotional and, like, starts crying, and he talks about how his dad didn't ever actually tell him any secrets about a bell. He just did this all on his own. And then Andre goes and talks to him, and... He's like, don't worry, it's all be fine, we can do this stuff together, you know. Yeah. It's like, He's like, okay. you'll go on to cast mini bells and I will go on to paint icons. And I'm like, so you took his vow of silence, but then you broke your vow of silence. Yeah, I don't know. But then after, like, that's like the end of the movie part. And then it switches, and it took me a couple minutes to figure out I didn't have to watch this anymore. Because all it does is they start focusing on all of Andre's paintings. And I was like, okay, I don't have to pay attention to this anymore. Yeah, I literally did. I kind of just skipped through it. <laughs> I, I left like, it on the TV, but I was not paying yeah. attention to it. <laughs> I like I, I focused on like the last one because like, that's like his most famous one. Yeah, I and think so. I did look at that good. one, but I was just like I started doing something else completely and just did not even pay attention to it anymore. But yeah, the end of the movie is it takes like ten minutes to look at his paintings. Yeah, like the director literally does like little bits of each picture. Yeah, and then slowly does the full picture. Like, yeah. Couldn't you just show me the biggest one already? <laughs> just show me the whole picture. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> but yeah, that's it. So the music for this is by Trent Reznor. Um, he did just pass away early last year. I think like the end of February he passed away. So he will not have any new things coming out. If there is anything that uses that his stuff his he is credited for, it will be because they just used his music. But he is known for Ivan's Childhood from 1962, Earth from 1930, and then I couldn't see what the full name was, but the first word of the name of this movie was Dolge Dolgaya from 1966. Okay. 
And the first ever thing that he worked on was Earth in 1930. I will say I did enjoy the music for this, like when I did notice it every now and then, when I could hear it over the terrible sound editing. Um, I did enjoy the music and I felt like most of the time it was placed properly. There was a few times when I was like, okay, why is it making that sound now? It doesn't, like, that doesn't make sense for this music right here. But for the most part, it was pretty good. So, like we said, this was a real dude. He's a real painter. Real person. Um, was, he's in the Russian Orthodox Church, he is a saint. Yep. Which is different. It's a different church so that they do their, like, sainthood stuff differently. I was trying to figure out how they did it. Because in the Catholic Church, to become, like, blessed and a saint, you have to have, like, a certain amount of miracles and all this other stuff. And I was having a hard time figuring out how they did it. So... Yeah, I don't have any clue. I was just curious because I was like, okay, he's called Saint. Why? <laughs> and it's like, there's really not much known about the guy. There really isn't. I, I was looking. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, there really isn't much about it. So that's probably why they could take a lot of liberty with this movie. Yeah, and just not focus on him at all for a good two hours. I mean, like, he, there's some, you can look up, like, his image, like, his icons on Google and pull it up. There's some pretty decent ones, I'll say that. Like, they, at the end, the picture, the, the paintings that they showed were at the actual, like, um, ch like, churches and temples where they were at. Which is pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah. Do you want me to keep going into trivia, then? Yeah, go for it. So, the horse thing. The horse thing. Why there's a bunch of horses in this movie. So, the director's just trying to be artsy. And he thinks that horses symbolize life. Okay? And so, that's why he likes to include horses in this. And, like, a bunch of scenes in the movie. Because life is the source for Rublev's art, supposedly. Interesting. And I'm like, okay, sure. Whatever works for you. <laughs> and like you said, there's so many different versions of this movie. Yeah. What was it? You said like five? Because I looked it up too, and I was like, okay. So this movie went through like several different cuts. Four. Yeah, there's five different versions of this movie. Five. It's crazy. Yeah. Ugh. None of them are shorter than two hours. Yeah, that's true. The shortest one was the UK version. It's two yes. hours and 25 minutes. And then the longest one is three hours and 25 minutes. Which is the original version. <laughs> and then the rest of them are just kind of in between. Like, uh, two hours and 40 minutes. And then the other two versions are just over three hours. So. Because there's a three hour and six minute one. Three hour and three minute one. Those are the th two that are just over three hours. Yeah. That's about it. I was like, and it's like some of the people like mentioned, like um, Daniel, that's what he's called. It's based off a real person, same name and everything. Hung out with Andre, supposedly. And he they painted the, um, it's called the Assumption at, at the Assumption Cathedral in Vladimir. Which I think is kind of cool. So I'm like, there's real people in this, you know, besides Andre. Yeah. Um... And of course, Theo was, of course, a real person. So, <sighs> um, we were talking about the languages, how it didn't translate everything earlier. Mm -hmm. There are three languages in this. There's Russian, of course, t 
Tatar, which I don't know where that's from. And then there's a little bit of Italian. Okay. So, where is that? I don't know where Tatar is. I think it's just another language that they speak in Russia. Because it, looking, when I clicked on that, it just brought up a bunch of movies that... I pulled it up. It's saying it's a... Turkish speaking people. Okay. And like, so it's part like near that area. Yeah, I was gonna say that's very close to Russia, so. Uh, so yeah, but mostly it was Russian. It was. I got one more thing. This was the film debut of our main character. And we also saw him in Stalker, it's Anatoly. This was his first movie. Interesting. So, I I will say he was better in Stalker. <laughs> yeah. You can tell the time difference, because what, Stalker came out in the, the 80s? 70s, 80s? Yeah. 79. So, there's a good 13 years difference between the movies, and you can tell the difference. That this is his first one. Yeah. And Stalker, he's had like, a few under his belt. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That's about it for trivia. Alright. So, where it has been on the list before, and where it's at now, the only list besides ours that it's on is the 2018 list. It was at number 201. And then, as of today, when we are recording, it is number 216 so it is dropping so I feel like I don't know when the blu-ray was was released but there's a possibility it was pretty recently and that's why it made a little bit of a jump up onto the list uh, probably the only thing because it doesn't make sense as to why it wasn't on any of the other lists until our list when we got it in 2018 so maybe it has something to do with the blu-ray <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. So previously, number 178, in 2010, 12 Monkeys from 1995. In 2012, Groundhog Day from 1993. In 2014, Diabolique from 1955. In 2016, our next movie, Mary and Max from 2009. In 2018, our previous movie, Gone Girl from 2014. And as of today, when we are recording, The Bandit from 1996, which is coming up, I think. It's coming up pretty soon. Yeah, only next one, two, three, four, five movies from now. It is coming up. And that one is not in English, I know, because I was looking at the poster of it. It's not in English. I don't know what's, what language it is, but I was like, I'll look really quick. All right, well, while you're looking, um, so this is the second movie that we have had from 1966. The other one that we had was Persona. And then this is also our second Russian movie, mainly Russian, when we say that. Um, like we said earlier, Stalker was the other one that we had. Then, this is the second movie that we've had with around, with uh, just over 40,000 votes. The only other one that had just over 40,000 votes was The Passion of Joan of Arc. Which, this movie and that movie kind of reminded me of each other. Like, watching this reminded me a little bit of The Passion of Joan of Arc. But I feel like The Passion of Joan of Arc was a little bit more understandable in storyline wise yes completely agree with that so um rotten tomatoes hold on i gotta find it <laughs> oh there it is so this has 95 percent and it's with 
Dog Day Afternoon, Before Sunset, Diabolique, Catch Me If You Can, 12 Years a Slave and Life of Brian. So it's sitting with some pretty good company, even though we didn't necessarily like it. And then Metacritic, it didn't have a rating, so we couldn't put it with anything. But that is our podcast trivia. Some fun oh. facts about other things now that we've had quite a few movies. Yeah. I found the language that the bandit's in. What is it? This will be our Turkish film. Oh, okay. It's in Turkish. It's countries of origin are Turkey, France, and Bulgaria. Interesting. So it's in it's in Turkish. Okay. That should be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so favorite line. Oh, how many did I write down? Yeah, I gotta. Let me look. One, two. Three, four, five, six. I got six. I have one, two, three, three. Okay, I'll do mine. Um, this is from that song earlier in the movie, the funny one. She puts out, but not for all. That made me giggle. Um, the faith that comes from one's heart. Simplicity without flourishes. Everything is vanity and decay. I'm like, well, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a sin not to use God's gifts. And this one I, I think is my favorite. Do you want to take your talent to the grave? Oh, yeah, I did like that one. I didn't write it down, but I did like it. So mine are just kind of moments that I weren't expect I wasn't expecting to be funny, but some of the lines were uh, "Keep up with me, you cur, or I'll maim you." Um, how can she be a virgin if she has a son? <laughs> I ask that question all the time. That one always makes me laugh. And then I gotta find the other one. I had it. I don't know where it went. Oh, there it is. So live between forgiveness and your own torment. That's all I got. What do you think? I don't know. I don't really care. I didn't like this movie. I, I think I like this one slightly better <laughs> than you. Um, so what, what was you your think? last one? What was your last one? So live between forgiveness and your own torment. I like that one. Let me go with that one. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what is your rating? I was having a hard time. I'm like, okay, where does this fit with my other movies that I've rated? And I'm going to put this as a four. Okay. I, I like this better than Stalker. I'm pretty sure I put Stalker as a three. Um, it's long. Yeah. It is long. It's confusing for the most part. Yeah. Like, it's about, it says it's about Andre Rublev, and I feel like he kind of just got forgotten. Yeah. And I was thinking in my head, I'm like, what movie is also based on a person, and it does a really good job of focusing on that person, and then I thought of Gandhi. Oh, yeah. And I was like, Gandhi did a fantastic job of focusing on what the character, what the movie is supposed to be about. The person, it's, you know, the title of it, Gandhi. And Gandhi's in pretty much all the scenes. This movie, no. Yeah. Not at all. Like, you, like, the f part two, I was like, am I still watching the same movie? <laughs> yeah. Because I was very confused. I'm like, well, where's Andre? Where is he at? It, I was puzzled but um some of the special effects not very good they weren't i will say i did like some of the cinematography some of it yeah it just fits with my other fours that's where i gotta put it okay um for me i absolutely hated this I was bored, like I said, 30 minutes in. I was confused throughout the entire thing. I didn't really know where the story was. The sound editing 
for this was really bad. Like, there was a point where the dog was on the river and he was on the other side of the river. And it sounded like he was right next to the microphone. Um, I can't really comment too much on the acting because I feel like we missed quite a bit of the subtitles because they just didn't translate them. They just left them <laughs> out. Yeah. Like, I feel like there was more said than what we got translations for. But I will say um, the main guy, Anatoly, if I'm comparing it to the only other thing I have from him, I will agree he is better in Stalker. So, and I mean, yes, this is his debut film, but there's other people that I've seen their debut film and I'm just like, holy crap, how can you act like this? You're amazing. And then yeah, you get some this, people will like so. their first films. You're like, holy shit. Yeah. This one is like, eh. I think really the only thing that I liked from this is there was a couple of funny moments throughout the three hours. And then I liked most of the music. So for me, it's a one. I only, other ha I only have two other ones. Eight and a half and Persona. And for me, it just kind of fits right in between it because I, I liked Persona a little bit more. I could actually understand Persona a little bit more, the story-wise, anyways. I'm like, well, you better buckle up. There's another one of his movies coming up. <laughs> this guy? Of um, the director of Persona. Oh. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I mean, there was a second movie from the director from Eight and a Half, and I liked that one. I know. So it so, really depends. It's just a matter of, what I guess, what the story is. But yeah, I was not a fan of this, so it's going to go with my ones. The only thing that makes it better than eight and a half is the music. <laughs> eight and a half's at the bottom still. Yeah, I hated everything about eight and a half. You're like, if I could have given it a zero, I would have. Yeah. <laughs> so, our next film is Mary and Max from 2009, which is a stop motion film. I'm so excited! So that will be our second stop motion film because we did have one for our holiday event. Then our next event coming up is our superhero event, which will be coming out at the end of February. So there will be no regular episode on February 29th. It will just be these four episodes, which for me are Batman Mask of the Phantasm from 1993 and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse from 2018. And I picked Mighty Morphin Power Rangers from 1995 and Avengers Endgame from 2019. Yep. So make sure you check that out. Uh, we are offering premium and Patreon. Premium, you just go to our website. Patreon, you can follow the link in the show notes. For $1 a month, you will get uncut episodes, early release episodes, and a special bonus episode every month. For $5 a month, you'll get all of that, plus you'll be able to join us for a movie of your choice every 50 movies, and you'll be able to vote on the special monthly episodes that could possibly come out. For $10 a month, you will get the above two tiers, as well as you can chime in for live stream Q&As that we will be doing once we get $10 a month people. And um, you can also join us for instead of 50 movies, it'll be every 25 movies, or you can join us for an event other than the Harry Potter event, plus everything in the previous tiers. Our special episode for the month of January is going to be Top 75. So we'll be talking about the 75, movie that's, 75 movies that we've already watched, and we are each going to put them in the order we think that they belong in or each personal list so we'll see how many we had in common there cuz i don't we'll know. see <laughs> i already know what my bottom one is that movie i think will stay at the bottom according <laughs> to our top 50 we only had two in common <laughs> we'll see how this one goes yeah i'll say add 25 more so we'll see I was like, I already know what my top two are, and I already know what, like, my bottom one is, so. Everything else, we'll see. I don't think we've had anything from 
the second 25 that's absolutely blown me out of the water yet. Yet. I mean, we've got How to Train Your Dragon, which I've seen, and Mary and Max, which I do like stop motion, but I don't think it's going to blow me out of the water. So. I'm like, well, just, just go in with an open mind. That's all I gotta say. Oh, no, I will. I'm just saying it's... There's no way that it's gonna end up being my number one. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not expecting that. So, if you can't support us that way, then you can always leave ratings and reviews. The ratings help us get more listeners, and reviews help us know what we can improve upon. If you are trying to talk to us, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Or you can email us. All of the links are in the show notes. And our music is by AudioBinger. You can find him on Facebook, YouTube, and his website, AudioBinger.net. So, until next time with Mary and Max, thank you so much for listening. Bye. Bye. Bye.